There is no YouTuber more emulated than Mr. Beast. He has more impersonators than Elvis. If Mr. Beast was a Halloween costume, he'd be outselling Spider-Man and Batman combined. There are so many clones of Mr. Beast in these days. It's like he's done a Shadow Clone Jutsu, but every Shadow Clone that exists is just a worse version of the original now. And they're getting more and more degenerate. Today we're about to talk about an Italian Mr. Beast clone who recently just did a stunt that ended up killing a five-year-old child. Now this isn't just one person emulating Mr. Beast, it's a group called The Borderline. And in their About section on YouTube, they even name drop Mr. Beast saying how inspired they were by his content and they want to have that level of success as well. So if you go to their channel, you'll immediately see the Mr. Beast influence. They do basically the exact same content, even copying the thumbnails pretty much doing the classic Mr. Beast hand, the one where he's like coming out of the grave like this, like they even do that, you know, like Emperor Palpatine shooting lightning out of his fingertips for the thumbnail. Like that kind of shit, they just immediately lifted from Mr. Beast in order to try and suckle on the bosom of his success. And it's working. Mr. Beast truly did figure out the online content creation formula. Copying Mr. Beast is a cheat code and fast pass to success. They've got massive engagement as well, for fundamentally just being a carbon copy of whatever Mr. Beast is doing. It reminds me of that old gag you used to see in cartoons where someone hops up on a photocopier and just keeps like printing up copies of their ass cheeks. That's what this channel did. Anytime Mr. Beast did a video, they did pretty much the exact same video, but since they're not English speaking, they get a different corner of that market that doesn't have the Mr. Beast videos being served to it. So it was a pretty smart business model. It just so happened that they were also extremely stupid douchebags that, for some reason, decided that it would be a good idea to risk the lives of everyone around them for their most recent video, which was spending 50 hours in a rented Lamborghini. Now, I called this a stunt in the beginning because that's what a lot of people are calling it in the media. This isn't a stunt. Like, just, just being in a car for a long period of time, that's called a fucking road trip. Most people can do that without killing somebody. But these assholes are so unbelievably reckless, dangerous, and dumb that they ended up having a head-on collision with another vehicle that killed a five-year-old child. And it's entirely their fault because they were speeding around, driving recklessly like they were on the fucking set of Fast and Furious, and the big shtick that they were doing with this challenge was insulting other drivers and taunting them. That was one of the big things. They would taunt other drivers during all of this and filming in the car. So it's pretty clear that they were distracted driving and were being extremely dangerous and careless on the road, which led to this fatal car accident. Now, this is the driver of the vehicle who was behind the wheel during the crash, but he was not the only one in the car. The rest of the crew was also present as well, and it seems like they were filming all of this garbage, which eventually led to this crash. So he was the one driving, but there is a video from one of the other members here right before they got into the Lamborghini for this challenge. I found this clip in Scott Schaefer's video, but I couldn't find the original upload of it anymore. So, you can clearly see the attitude of what the video was supposed to convey. Just shitting on all of the other cars in the road because they're in an expensive luxury car for 50 hours. That was the whole video premise. Wow. What a banger. I too remember the classic Mr. Beast video where he went around calling everyone poor and making fun of them and spitting on them from the comfort of his luxury vehicle. Uh, that that one's timeless. That's iconic Mr. Beast moment right there. I also find it impressive how he actually just looks like a douchebag. You don't even have to talk to him to know that he's extremely obnoxious. I went to look at a bit of their other content because I couldn't imagine he actually just sounds like this normally because his voice sounds like 15 chain smokers all did a fusion dance together and then inhaled helium. Turns out that's exactly how he sounds. In his little uh, Mr. Beast copycat group, He's just the one that is always screaming and making goofy faces and goofy voices. What, what a fucking loser. Now, according to authorities, what happened is the Borderline crew went to overtake a car at high speeds and then had the head-on collision with this vehicle that had a mother and her children in it, 
which unfortunately led to the loss of the life of the five-year-old boy. The Italian Prime Minister came out and said that they will be losing their license for life during this investigation, and then said, if you're a repeat offender and take a person's life because you are a jerk behind the wheel, you don't see your license for the rest of your life. It's not like I suspend it for a few months. Meanwhile, other Italian lawmakers say the five YouTubers involved should also immediately have their social media account access taken away. And that's a picture of the mother and the two children. Now, I don't know if it's just a cultural thing, but I feel like the word jerk here is not nearly a strong enough word to describe this evil group of douchebags. Maybe jerk is like a really strong word in Italian culture, I don't know, but I feel like jerk doesn't really quite capture just how awful these people are here. This is a ridiculously dangerous thing to do, fucking driving recklessly while taunting drivers and filming everything inside of the car. Distracted driving, like what the fuck? Like, that's not the behavior of a jerk. A jerk is someone that, like, double dips in the salsa at a Super Bowl party. This is an absolutely reckless danger menace to society. Like, this is a piece of shit. This whole group, are, they're pieces of shit. Now, they did post this video yesterday, which is just a still image, letting everyone know that the borderline, you know, the band's breaking up here, basically, after this tragedy. And that's kind of where that's at at the moment. It's still all under investigation as of right now. But man, it is fucking horrific. Taking the life of a five-year-old boy because you were so clout hungry that you came up with this dumb challenge, which is a stupid challenge, by the way, of just staying in a car for 50 hours. That's really boring. But then not only that, you took a boring challenge and then made it dangerous by driving like an absolute asshole and putting everyone's life at risk on the road. And unfortunately, it did take a life. So it's just, the whole thing is terrible. Now, the next thing I want to talk about here isn't necessarily pertaining to the story itself, but just more so the group as a whole, the Mr. Beast copycats. I just find it so interesting how different times are where the dream job for a lot of people growing up, a lot of young people, is to be an internet content creator. And this desire for social media attention is worth dying over or killing over like that's this isn't the first time something like this has happened unfortunately it won't be the last either because as people get more and more hungry for these internet points they get more and more extreme with the shit that they do in film to try and get the attention and i just find it so fascinating how different that is than when I was growing up. Times have really changed in a big way. I remember growing up in elementary school, they would ask you, what do you want to be when you grow up? And most kids give, you know, the very standard answers of, I want to be an astronaut. I, I want to be a firefighter. My answer was I wanted to be a professional basketball player and a professional football player at the same time. I thought I could really be the next Michael Jordan, but instead of baseball on the side, I played football on the side. And make no mistake, I was close. I was right on the cusp of achieving that, that goal, that glory. But unfortunately, the Lord had to nerf me and I never got my growth spurt. I stayed five foot six. But imagine the athletic specimen, the weapon I could have become if I did get a little taller. I, I was so close. But the point is, that's really changed. Nowadays, most kids answer that question with, they want to be a YouTuber. That's like the number one job occupation kids dream of. And for this group, they were living the dream. That by all metrics, they were extremely successful. But they just kept getting more and more dangerous with the shit that they were doing for this viral fame, these viral videos. And then it led to this awful situation. It's just fucking sad. I have no sympathy for the YouTubers here. It is entirely their fault. They're, they're old enough to know that what they were doing had very real risk involved and I just feel horrible for the mother and the surviving child. This is a traumatizing experience that I have no doubt will most likely haunt them for the rest of their lives and I'm wishing them nothing but the best here. Uh, but yeah, fucking awful situation that I just wanted to talk about a little bit. That's really about it. See ya.